everyone. Uh, welcome back to Yoga with Kate May County Library System. Um, I'm feeling very isolated in quarantine, and you might be feeling the same way. So I would like to um, let you know if you are feeling that way, you are definitely not alone in that regard or that feeling. Um, and it can take a toll on your practice. It certainly has taken a toll on my practice where it's, it's hard for me to sit down on my mat and be with my feelings and with myself. So uh, if you are feeling that way, um, do what you can in your practice. Uh, just honor it. If all you can do each day is roll out your mat and sit down on it and acknowledge how you're feeling, that is the practice of yoga. So be gentle and easy on yourself as we go through this time of not being able to see or touch each other, which can be a very important, good thing in our human you know, lives. So we're gonna start by giving ourselves a hug today. So just find a comfortable seat. You can sit up on a block if you have them. If it's more comfortable for you to be seated on a chair or in bed, that is fine as well. Do what you will, do what you can with the practice and be good to yourself, especially right now, all the time, but <laughs> especially now um, going through this unprecedented event in our lives. So allow the shoulders to roll back and down. We're just gonna open our arms up. And we're gonna cross one arm over the other, doesn't matter which. We're gonna draw our hands slightly towards our shoulders and just hug ourselves in here. And take a breath or two, feeling the body settle down and relax. Feeling that nice stretch across the back side of the body. And then when you feel ready, just open up through the arms. And on an exhale, putting the opposite arm on top, we're going to hug ourselves in again, curling in. If you want to draw your elbows towards your belly button, feel free to really get a nice curve through the spine, maybe rock back and forth. And at your own pace, just feel free to whenever you feel like you need the space, open up through the arms, maybe feel the shoulders draw back so you can really broaden through that chest. And then continually just swap arm for whichever arm you would like on top. Give yourself a hug as a mindfulness practice. Maybe imagine that you're being hugged by someone who loves you very much or someone who you love very much. And take a second and just be in that position, in that pose with that person or with that animal or with that thing, anything that connects you and grounds you um, and begins to tie your mind and your body together. Taking a couple more, staying on that um, same person or thing or animal with each hug or with each hug maybe switching to a different person. And if you believe in this sort of thing, maybe sending some positive energy to the person, thing, or animal that you're hugging in your mind. Taking one or two more, flowing with the breath or none. I'm gonna take one more. I'm going to hug, I'm going to wrap myself a little bit in the spine, maybe back and forth, wiggling and waggling across the front, across the block. And then on an inhale, we're going to let the arms rise up. And as we exhale, just letting the fingertips float down. If they don't reach the ground, just letting them hang heavily towards the floor. And take a second, reposition if you feel uncomfortable. Let the eyelids gently close. And feel the lower half of the body settling down. The trunk or the upper half of our body gently lifting up towards the ceiling so we have 
a sense of stacking our hips underneath of our ribs, which are underneath of our shoulders. Allow the fingertips to grow heavy. And feel the breath move through the body here. Take a second to slow down and pay attention to what's happening. Is it easy or is it difficult to breathe today? And just start there. Can I keep my mouth closed with comfort and allow the breath to move through my nostrils? Is the breath smooth or is it choppy? Getting a sense of the pace of your breath. Is it fast or is it slow? And becoming aware of the length of your breath. Is it long? Is it short? And then becoming aware of the depth of your breath. Where and what part of your body does your breath become stuck, that it can't move down any further? Ideally, we like to feel our breath down low, all the way down through the pit of our stomach, feeling the belly slightly flare out at the end of the inhale. And as we exhale, maybe we feel it move back out and through the nostrils. But if it's not there, that's okay. Just noticing the breath and where it's at is a part of the practice. Taking another couple here, noticing the breath as it moves in and out through the body. Examining the quality without judgment. And taking a second to allow the corners of your lips to tilt up towards the ear lobes giving yourself a smile, coming into some enjoyment of the practice, maybe thinking of one or two things about your yoga practice or your life that you feel grateful for. It's been a hard time, especially for myself, to find gratitude in little things. So I'm hoping with this practice of gratitude that it comes a little bit more naturally to me. Taking another breath or two here, feeling your breath slow and settle, become steady. If, though, if those things are happening, if not, just being with the breath, whatever it is. And then when you feel ready, letting the eyelids blink open, Letting those shoulders give a big roll up, and then a nice gentle roll down. Taking an inhale to the shoulder height position in the arms. As we exhale, allowing the palms to come together. As we inhale, the arms rise up. As we exhale, the arms float out and long and wide down to our sides. Inhaling, shoulder height. Exhaling to a prayer position. Inhaling to lengthen the arms up. Exhale to allow the arms to widen out. And as your arms widen out, pretend that you're in a little bubble here. So our bubble is around us, and we're using our fingertips to stretch across as far as we can to make our bubble as big as we can. So on an inhale, stretching the arms out, the fingertips reaching towards the edge of your bubble. As we exhale, bringing the palms in close. On an inhale, lengthening up, feeling the fingertips stretch towards the top of the bubble. And as we exhale, keeping those fingertips stretching out to feel the edges. If you'd like to hold that, take an exhale here. Um, in your mind as a mindfulness practice, feel free to use the bubble. Inhaling, arms to shoulder height. Exhaling, hands to prayer. Inhaling to lengthen the arms up. Maybe the palms separate, maybe they come to stay together. 
Exhale to float the arms down, out, wide and long. Inhale to shoulder height. Exhaling hands to the prayer. Inhale to rise the arms up. Again, maybe the palms separate, maybe they don't. And as we exhale, we stretch out and down. We're going to take one more of those. Take a breath in between. Exhale to side out. Inhale to shoulder height. Exhale, hands through prayer. Inhale to lengthen and lift up. Exhale to stretch the arm, the fingertips coming down, down, down until the fingertips graze the floor. And you can either stay on your block or slide off of it. I'm going to slide off of my block. And I'm going to switch the direction of my legs. Um, I feel comfortable sitting cross legged. If you don't, you can sit any way you want, um, especially when we're working on like torso and arm things. So find a comfortable position for yourself wherever and whatever that happens to be. Take a second to reground. Let the palms rise up as the backs of the hands press towards the thighs here. Just take a second, take a breath, reconnect with the breath, reconnect with your reasons for coming onto your mat and practicing today. And we're gonna lengthen our right arm up in front of us, palm facing in. We're just going to cross our right arm across our chest, holding on to our left shoulder. And then if this is enough of a shoulder stretch for you, you can stay here. Or if you'd like, you can take your left hand and just scoop it under and stretch across the back of that arm. Take a second here. If you don't like to sit still, you can certainly wiggle in different ways through this pose. If you don't mind sitting still, just being there and paying attention to the breath. And we're going to keep our right hand on our left shoulder for a second. We're going to bring that left hand down. We're going to open up through the arm and then bring it back across the chest. And we're going to do that a couple times. I like to exhale as I'm closing and inhale as I'm opening. One more open here on this right side. Take a breath and exhale. On an inhale, we're gonna rise the right arm up. And as we exhale, we're gonna come down into a side bend over towards the right, the left. Taking a couple breaths. Again here, if we're collapsing forward, we wanna be stretching that shoulder back to open up through the chest. The more space we have here, the easier it is to catch our breath. If this is too much on the arm or the shoulder for you, then you can drop the hand down to touch the low back, or you can simply have the arm at your side or any way that feels comfortable for your body. On an inhale, we're gonna rise ourselves up. And as we exhale, we're gonna stretch forward, bringing the body as far forward as we can as we tilt down into a fold here. Letting the chin drop down towards the chest, the head hang heavy. Breathing into the backside body as it lengthens up towards the ceiling. And feeling that connection of our six bones down into the earth. And taking a couple breaths here, noticing how the hips feel, how the low body feels when it's being, um, as the top part of our body is being supported on it. So we're bringing a little bit more pressure and weight into that low part of our body. And then on an inhale, we're gonna come up with our head and chest first. And we're gonna walk our hands back towards our legs. Again, bringing our palms up towards the ceiling, letting the shoulders roll back and down, feeling those elbows grow heavy as the shoulders drop. And then we're gonna concentrate on the left side, the left shoulder now. So we're gonna draw the left arm up, palm facing in. We're gonna cross that arm over our chest and hold on to our right shoulder. And then again, like before, either staying here 
Or if you'd like to do a little something different, you can draw the right hand under and kind of stretch across through that back of that arm. And again, just taking a couple breaths, noticing how the shoulder feels. If your shoulder's backed up here, taking a second to let it drop down. And breathing as much as we can, as deeply and evenly, um, with as much intention as we can find within ourselves. One more breath here. And then reconnect hand, shoulder if you can, letting the right hand drop. And then if you'd like to move with your breath on an inhale, we can sweep the arm out. And as we exhale, we can draw it back. As much as possible, you're trying to feel this motion directly from the joint. So if we're swinging through the whole of our torso, we might not feel it as pinpointed in the shoulder, which is fine if you do not want to feel it pinpointed in your shoulder, but just be aware of all the extra motions that our body can make in order to take um, the tension away from a joint that we're working on. One more open here, we're gonna stay here. We're gonna bring our right hand down to the floor. Inhale, the left up, and as we exhale, we're gonna come into a side bend towards the right. If you feel yourself settling towards the floor, we're gonna open up through that chest. Pretend we're pressing against an invisible wall behind us, and we wanna feel our back against it. And again, taking whatever modification for your arm, which allows for you to be in the pose, if this pose is good for you. And then taking one more breath here. On an inhale, rising up. As we exhale, we're gonna let our arms slow down because I'm gonna change my foot shape. Um, and if you'd like to unwind your feet, if you've been sitting in a cross-legged position, feel free. Um, and we're gonna come into a forward fold with our legs extended. My knees are a little wonky, so I'm gonna bring the blocks kind of underneath them a little bit so I can keep a nice bend to mine. You don't have to do this. Um, I just tend to hyper extend into my knees. So if you don't have blocks, you can roll a blanket to put them underneath or an extra mat, or you can just come into the fold <laughs> without all of the extra future moss. But on an inhale, we're gonna lengthen and rise up. And as we exhale, we're gonna come down into this fold. I like to hold on to my ankles or my um, calves, uh, but you wanna hold on somewhere that allows your shoulders to draw back and down rather than hunch them forward. And for each inhale, you can think about lengthening through the chest. And with each exhale, maybe think about surrendering down. Taking a couple breaths here, stretching out through the legs, feeling that again, that length through the back side body that crunching through the front side body. Whenever we're stretching a part of our body, um, another part of our body has to be contracting. This is how the human body works. That's how muscles work. So think about when you come into a pose, what you're lengthening or stretching as compared to what is firing up or what is holding on in order to feel that length and stretch. Usually it's an opposite part. Or don't think about it at all. <laughs> Take one more inhale to lengthen forward. One last exhale to sink down. And then on an inhale, rising up. Exhale to bring the arms down to our sides. If you have something on your knees and would like to remove it, feel free. We're going to draw now our right, sorry, we're going to bend our right knee. I'm just going to hold 
hold on to the shin, feeling the press of our hands against it as our fingertips come together. And we're thinking about the heel of our left foot drawn towards the end of our mat as the four corners of our right foot really press down. So if someone were to come and try to kick your foot out from underneath of you, there's some pressure there. There's some, some ump holding you into that spot. Take a breath or two. And then relax the hands and just move through the knee a little bit, letting it move right and left. Eventually, we're going to drop the knee out towards the right, and we're going to bring the bottom of our foot to our calf or shin, um, or if you'd like, you can draw the bottom of your foot up towards your inner thigh. If that causes you to hunch down and curve your back towards the back wall, then maybe think about coming a little bit further forward with the foot. But wherever you find your greatest degree of comfort, durability, comfortableness, um, and where you can hold yourself upright in this pose. We're going to be coming into Janu Sarsasana, um, head to knee pose. So we're thinking about lengthening up and slightly twisting our belly button to look towards our left big toe. On an inhale, we're going to lengthen our arms up. As we exhale, we're going to just come into a gentle tilt forward. Inhale to lift. Exhale to rock, inhale to lengthen. And do a couple of these, feeling this movement come from our hips, where that nice ball, those nice ball and socket joints allow for great mobility. One more inhale. And on our exhale, we're going to tilt and fold forward. If you'd like, again, you can hold on to a body part, but don't hold on to something that's gonna make you hunch your shoulders forward. Allow them to draw back and down, creating this nice space for the chest even as we forward fold. Breathe into your body. Breathe into where you're feeling this stretch. We're externally rotating and opening through the right hip. And we're really stretching through the left hamstring here. And on an inhale, we're gonna rise ourselves up. Exhale, let our arms come down to our sides. We've done quite a bit of forward folding. So you stay where you're at. I'm gonna switch my body so you can see this a little bit better. So we just did quite a bit of forward folding. So we're gonna come into a back bend, a slight back bend now, or a, a chest opener. I'm gonna plant my right hand down to the floor slightly behind me. I'm gonna come up on my right leg and my left foot. And then I'm just gonna stretch myself back. If this is not right for you or doesn't feel good, you do not have to do this. But I like to open up through the front side body after doing the back side body stretching. And then slowly roll down, coming back to the original position. We're gonna stretch our right leg out to meet our left, moving through the body here. Bending both of our knees, planting the feet to the floor, planting our hands behind us underneath of our shoulders. I face my fingers in, uh, but if that's not comfortable for you, you can face them behind, or you can face them to the right and the left. So we're planting down through the palms, we're planting down through the feet. And on an inhale, we're gonna lift into reverse table. And on an exhale, we're gonna float down. One more inhale to lift. 
Exhale to float down. Inhale to rise up, lengthening through the legs. Exhale to allow the arms to come down to our sides. And then taking a nice little bend through the left leg. We're gonna hold on to the shin like we did before, stretching the right heel towards the end of our mat, planting down through the four corners of our left foot. <laughs> Take an exhale and an inhale. If you feel out of breath like me, that means we're not breathing enough. Taking a couple breaths here, feeling that thigh pulling in towards the belly as the belly pulls towards the thigh. And then releasing the leg, bringing the hands down, and allowing some movement to come in through that hip joint. And eventually letting the hip or the knee rotate out. The bottom of the foot coming towards the calf or the shin of the right leg. Taking a second here, noticing how the body is touching the floor, where you would like it to be grounded. Um, the difference in the tightness in our hips, where we feel like we um, overextend or dump too much tension into, and parts of our body where maybe we're not engaging enough. So just take a second, think about those things, feel the body connecting downward. Take a nice deep inhale, sigh it out. Second, to allow the belly button to slightly turn towards that extended big toe. Inhale to raise the arms up. Exhale to tilt forward. Inhale to rise back. And move through these at your own pace. Exhaling as we tilt forward. Inhaling to come back through center. One last inhale, rise. Exhale to float forward, reaching, 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 until we find ourselves connected with our right leg or with our hands to the floor on either side of our right leg, whatever feels more comfortable for you. And I like to inhale and draw my chest forward so I can really feel the length moving through my body. And then on an exhale, we can surrender downward. Breathe into the hamstring stretch here, the backside body stretch, into this external hip opening on our left side. Noticing the difference between the sides as we breathe fully and deeply and evenly into our bodies. Feels really good on this side for me, even though it's tighter. I really needed this stretch. So I even noticed that too, finding little bits of gratitude in our yoga practice in order to notice things about our bodies that we normally or otherwise wouldn't notice at all. They do so much for us day after day. So allowing them some little bit of um, comfort and stretch and strengthening through the practice. And then on an inhale, we're gonna rise ourselves back up. I'm gonna do that lengthener or that slight back bend on this side as well. So I'm gonna twist so you can see me. And now left hand is gonna come behind. I'm going to come up onto the shin and knee of my left leg, 
and onto my right foot. And just stretch and move. Maybe back bend if you'd like a little bit more. And then slowly unwind, sink back down. Uh, stretch the legs out, shake through the length of the legs, noticing the difference between the sides, maybe internally and externally rotating through the length of the legs. Before we come into our next um, torso lengthener, again, we're going to come into that reverse tabletop. So, like I said, I like to draw my hands behind and bend through my knees. Settling myself down, I kind of just feel where I want my hands and my feet to be for this. And then on an inhale, we rise. And on an exhale, we come down. Beautiful. On an inhale, we're going to lengthen up. Exhale, we're going to slowly float into a forward plane. And then from here, usually I flex my toes back, but here I'm going to stretch my toes and point them in my fold. So do the opposite of what you would normally do. If you normally point your toes, take a nice flex to them. If you flex, take a nice point to them. Just really stretch out through the parts of the foot that you normally don't stretch through. And then slowly on an inhale, rise up. Then come to hands and knees on our mats, coming into a tabletop pose. Setting ourselves up, sorry, my chest. Um, setting ourselves up here with the columns of our legs and the columns of our arms. So much like when we stack hips under ribs, under shoulders, um, in our tabletop position, we're still stacking those things. We're just um, now in a different position. And we like to stack our wrists underneath of our elbows, which are underneath our shoulders. I have broad shoulders, so my hands, I bring almost to the edge of my mat. And ideally, we'd like our knees underneath of our hips, another column of support. And we're really pressing down into the tops of our feet, as if someone were like standing on your calves in order to press your feet down. Take an inhale here. Sigh it out. Two more like that. And then when you come back to the mouth close, swallow a couple times and feel your throat and how tight or how um, not tight it is. Just bringing some notice and attention to that area. On an inhale, we're going to gently move forward. On an exhale, we're going to sink the hips back. Inhale, move forward. Exhale, to sink the hips back. Move at your own pace with your own breath. Allow the body to only go so far as the breath allows. So we don't have to keep moving once we're not breathing. We can just stop the movement and move in the opposite direction. We're going to come back through center here, finding our tabletop, feeling the press of our palms into the mat, the press of the tops of our feet into the mat. If that is not good for your knees, you can always tuck your toes under and press into the balls of your feet. Find what's best for you, your body, and your joints. Take an inhale here. Sigh out the exhale. And we're going to stretch our 
Sorry, I'm going to come to the page. We're going to stretch our right leg back from behind us to about hip height. I'll show you from here, too. So we're um, thinking about stretching that heel back from behind us. The toes are pointed towards the floor. Take an inhale and an exhale. And then either stay here or stretch the left arm forward. Looking down, finding balance, noticing where the wobbles are. One more inhale, a lengthen and stretch. Exhale to float hands and knee down. And then stretch back into the child's pose. I like to widen my legs, walk my hands forward, and sink my forehead towards the floor. Taking a couple breaths here. Noticing how the body feels. And then on an inhale, rising back up. Coming back into the tabletop pose. You know we're doing balancing, so setting yourself up for a good solid balance. Take a breath in between. And then on an inhale, right leg, or sorry, left leg rises behind. Again, toes floating towards the floor, leg at hip height, we're extending that heel back and away. And then either staying or stretching right arm forward. Noticing the difference between the sides, the difference in balance, how hard or easy it feels. One more inhale. And exhale to sink hand and knee back. Take an inhale here. Exhale to drop into cat. Inhale to back bend through cow. Dropping the cat. Inhale into regular cable. Tapping the toes underneath. Maybe walking the knees a little further, a little closer to each other. And then we're going to begin to walk our hands back until we come over top of our toes, coming into a stretch here of the balls of our feet. We tend to dump pressure towards the big toe or towards the pinky toe. So notice where you dump your pressure and even out the weight between your foot if you need to. Sometimes my pinky toe gets caught and I need to move it out of the way. So this is not a good position for you. Um, nice thing to have blocks handy or anything that gives you a little bit more lift. You can always bring your hands to something, or just be a little bit more tilted forward rather than stacked over your hips. But you want to be able to feel the stretch, and it's not comfortable. It's not <laughs> the easiest or the best. It's possibly one of my least favorite stretches, but it's really good for us to just notice how it feels, even if we can't stay in it for very long. So take another breath here. Sigh it out. And then we're going to release our toes, stretch them behind us, bring the tops of the feet down, maybe bring our heels towards the feet. Again, if that is uncomfortable, we always have this little block, or two blocks, or three blocks, or pillows that you can use underneath of your sits bones. Take a breath and notice the stretch through the top of the foot now that the toes aren't held under.
And then moving that out of the way, moving the block out of the way, coming back to the seated position. Um, I try to always end my yoga class with a shavasana. It is not, <laughs> it wouldn't be very nice for me to like stare at you for five minutes while you while you shavasana. So I'm going to recommend, um, highly recommend that you find a minute or two, maybe five or 10 minutes to lie quietly in shavasana. Maybe just focus on your breath or focus on nothing. But give yourself a few minutes of your own time. Um, if you happen to have a wall handy, uh, you can always come into legs up the wall and rest this way. Or you can come into a traditional shavasana and just lay down on the floor. Take a minute, take two minutes, take 10 minutes for yourself. Um, and maybe focus on something that's been hard for you. Like for me, it's been gratitude. And, um, and it's like, it's hard to come in contact with those kinds of feelings that we're having. But it's very important for us to acknowledge them and know that it's a completely human thing to be feeling, whatever that feeling is. So, namaste. Thank you for sharing your practice and honoring me today with your practice. I hope that all of you are well and that your families are well and that we will see you when we come back from the end of our isolation. Have a nice day and I will see you next week.